What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Subnautica where we're gonna hang out for a little bit and see if we can find some magnesium in the deep blue sea. It's the next thing that we're shooting for, it is important, we need the magnesium so that we can make a repair tool, so that we can fix our sea moth. Now at this point I could totally easily just make a new sea moth, but I'm making a point out of this that I want to fix my sea moth. I don't want to be that guy that just like lets stuff break when he has the chance to fix it, just because he has the capability to get a new one. I just, I don't feel like being that guy right now. And so obviously, since resources are limited, I'm gonna go ahead and try and find the repair tool, and also it's because we're doing this early access showcase, so I wanna show off as many of the items as possible before we go much further. I'm gonna eat these spade fish so that for the rest of the episode, we shouldn't have to worry about filling our bellies with anything. I went off that way, and it looked like it was the end of the world, so I'm thinking we probably wanna go over here. It wasn't the end of the world, but it was definitely quite barren over there. We're like, huh? how was that vacation? I'm like, well, it wasn't the end of the world. You know, it was pretty good. Alright, so back on the road again. I feel like we should have some kind of trucking song going on when we do this, but unfortunately none is coming to mind. And it's it's just it's a result of the last couple days. That's gotta be what it is. See, I've been burning that midnight oil. Ever since I got that Super Nintendo, I have been destroying the midnight oil. Not only burning it, but just like burning it and then taking the resin that's left over and burning that too, and just like I really need to get my shit under control. I didn't realize what a problem Mega Man X was going to be. Mario Kart is also proving to be like a surprising time sink. Considering how much I played it when I was a kid, I didn't think I would play it that much once I got it like again. Like I always thought it would just go to my collection and that's fine. But no, actually I've been playing the hell out of the old Mario Kart just because I like it better than the new ones. I don't know, maybe I'm just a purist. It's got to be nostalgia. I'm thinking that's what it's got to be. It's got to be that nostalgia that's totally like jamming me up right now. We're looking for the mushroom biome in case you're wondering what we're doing right now. That looks promising over there. I see glowing. Every time I see phosphorescence underneath the water, I start to get excited, so we might be sort of heading in the right direction. I don't know. We can't take this thing down too much. Oh, I have beached my submarine. My bad. Sorry, submarine. I didn't mean to. It wasn't my plan to scuff up your tummy. I try to keep my tummy as unscuffed as possible. If you got tummy scuffs, I feel like that lowers your marketability in life. Alright, so we're down inside some kind of chasm here. Do I have room to rotate, or am I gonna run into stuff? I've got room to rotate! Hooray! Okay. Well, I still don't know exactly where we're trying to go right now, but we found the mushroom biome that one time, so I figure we'll find it again. It looks like the depth is pitching off right here, so I think that would be an indicator that we're going in the right direction. We are going to have to abandon this sub, though, eventually, because it can only go down to 100 meters, which is an oddly, like, limited depth for a sub this big. Like, I figured it would allow you to go a lot deeper, but no, that does not appear to be the situation. So once we get down to 100, we have to leave this thing behind. We can come back and get it. We're just using it as sort of like our mobile base for right now, but we can't take it, like, super deep like we could with the sea moth, for example. Yeah, I understand. Are we... So, let me take a look here and figure out... See, the problem is the farther we get away from our buoy... We're going to have to go out in the sea moth. I don't see any threats out there anyways. It only has like 20% health. But worst case scenario is if we blow it up on accident, we should be able to reuse it perfectly fine. Let's go have a look around. And if we can find this down here, I think this is the edge of the map. I don't think this is actually where the extra biome is going to be. Although there are nodes down here, weirdly enough. Huh. Well, I mean, if we can get the magnesium from those, I'll get the magnesium from those. I mean... Yeah, I'll take the... Oh, did we have magnesium? We had magnesium, damn it. I recognize the gra... Well, maybe? It looks kind of like quartz for right now. Either way, let's go make our repair tool so we can fix this bastard. I would love to have, like, vehicle-mounted weapons and all kinds of goodies on some of our other ships, though. Given the amount of hostilities that are present in the deep ocean, I feel like that would probably benefit us over the long term. It'd also make the game a lot more fun. Maybe some hostile aliens or something. I don't know what they're trying to do with the game, though. It all depends, like, where they want it to go. If it's going to be a research game where you're constantly, like, scanning things and learning things, as it appears to be from the transfuser that we can see in the menu that hasn't been implemented as of right now, then eh, I'll go with the developer's wishes on that one because obviously at the end of the day, it's their creation. Let's see. There it is, the welder. Awesome, I'm getting flashbacks to Killing Floor right now. I love Killing Floor. Oh my god, I cannot wait for Killing Floor 2 to come out. I am going to vanish off the grid when Killing Floor 2 comes out. So do I have to be, like, out in the water with you right now for this to work? I like how it's kind of like the eye welder. It's all nice and streamlined. It's like one color. Although you know that thing's going to turn yellow in the next ten years. I don't know why they always use white plastic on stuff, because it always turns yellow. And then once it turns yellow, it looks awful. Oh, I thought he set that on the console for a second. I was like, that's really cool. Oh, yeah, there it is right there. Nice. Hell, yeah. 
Okay, I'm excited about this now. We actually have a means and a way to fix our stuff. Now, that doesn't leave us with a whole lot of stuff left to do in the game. I think I'd like to jump in and explore some of the deep sea biomes. It doesn't look like they've added many new varieties of biota just yet. It looks like, more or less, they've just kind of, like, added a few new items and that's that. But the new items that they've added are really, like... Remarkably cool. I mean, I'm trying to come up with the right words to say right now because I don't want to underplay what the game has going for it But I do think that they've really really killed it when it comes to like some of the vehicles and stuff you can have I would love if later on they have something you could dock this into like an aircraft carrier up at the surface And then with that you can build a base on top of that We haven't built any pipes yet I was thinking maybe we should like start building some pipes or something and creating like an underwater area where we could just like get oxygen whenever we need it. I don't know exactly what it's going to require of us in order to make those pipes, but I think I'd like to give it a shot. So that's another item that we haven't fiddled around with yet. I'm going to come about full right there. I'm going to keep it slightly on my left though because if that's right there, we know that the ship, the Aurora, is over there. And so I'd like to just kind of like check the bottom of the seafloor and see what we can see here. And insert as many ocean jokes as you want to make right there, but I think that's the fall off on the edge of the map They do it every now and again You want to be careful because if you go down too deep in those right there It'll crash your game so once you get down to like 400 500 meters I think the memory fills up or something like that because they haven't actually created the memory allocations or whatever for when you're diving down in there And then pretty soon you get a memory leak and BAM there it is It's not really a memory leak because I think it's just like they haven't allocated for it yet a memory leak is there on accident This is just like undone gameplay so it doesn't know where to store it as of right now it also just spawned metal randomly right there which is kind of cool I don't know I enjoy this sort of thing I don't know if this is something that like grabs your biscuit as a viewer but I really just like tooling around in games like these and like looking at the stuff that is to be seen I've always dreamed about going down into the ocean and doing interesting stuff and so this sort of scratches that itch for me. It makes it even better because it adds like alien worlds to the equation, which are a big deal to me as well. It looks like we've hit some kind of shallows right here. How far away from our buoy are we? Okay, so we're not like that far out, but I'm still a little bit confused as to where... See, I need to go back and watch the footage again and figure out where we found the other biome. Either that or I need to start like marking some of the rarer stuff with buoys or beacons or something maybe. Might help us find our way around. Marking the location with bacon, but I don't think the animals would leave it there. So, given beacons and bacons, the bacon beacon, the beacon of bacon. The beacon of bacon has the deacon of bacon. Ooh, the deacon of bacon who holds the beacon of bacon. Yeah. And then when he cooks it, he weakens the bacon. Although, I don't think I want my bacon weakened. I think I want my bacon strengthened. I told my story already about bacon and how it's so good when it comes straight from the hog, like straight from the butcher shop, but I really don't have too many more bacon related stories. You know what I hate when you cook bacon? I don't know why if this only happens to me, but I just keep it in the pan like open style and I just let it sizzle and I just kind of like move my wrist back and forth like I'm softly just like loving the bacon with my hand. And so as I do that, I always get like the bacon grease, those little pops and like fizzes that come off. The bacon grease always lands on your hand. You're like, ow. No, I think it's out here somewhere. I'm pretty sure now that we're in the vine forest. I don't think that they can hurt the vine forest of horrible three-second videos. People making funny faces and getting super drunk. Yeah, I think this is probably the runway into the location we want to be in. Luckily, the kelp does not appear to be too horrific of a problem. I don't think those can attack us while we're in here. However, people said you could find gold up in here, so if you're on the lookout for gold, they said that down in some of the cracks in here you can find gold if you can survive the fact that there's like dozens of those gator monsters around. I don't know if that's, you know, something you want to tempt fate with. I found that the red vine area like right here is probably the safest place to get the stuff that you want. What is this over here? Like a little bit of a plateau or a mesa over here with a cave in the bottom. Where are we at right now? Trying to find my beacon for... So our pod... Okay, it's right over there. Alright, having a lot of trouble finding this deep ocean biome. The map is not randomly generated. I've had a lot of people ask me that question and say, Hey, is the map randomly generated? And to that question, I simply answer no. The map is actually the same each and every time, and the developers have expressed that's going to be for a reason. So that you're in a static environment, and the creatures that are going to be in here will have their own like behaviors and things like that. Because obviously you're going to be collecting DNA, doing science, and stuff like that. Let's go check these little caves out over here. We can talk about this while we're looking inside of caves. I don't think it's that big a deal. I'm going to take the seamoth out since we've repaired it already. But yeah, they've said that they want the thing to be handcrafted so that you can like feel the love in every nook and cranny. And you can tell that everything was designed to contain the monsters that it had. Additionally, it saves resources because a lot of developers out there, surprisingly enough or unsurprisingly enough, I guess I don't really know, it's very, very difficult to make random generation systems that actually function the way that you want them to. And so that can be a major, major hitch in your giddy-up if you're trying to develop a game. 
Ooh. That's a little troublesome. I think what I may try to do right here is because our, our sea glide is bugged, what I may try and do, it's stuck up in the air right now. What I'm going to try and do is maybe reload my game real fast. I'll come back in a second. We'll see if we can get that fixed. All right, so we're back, and I think it fixed the sea glide. It looks like it's in the right spot now. We're going to go back and get some air real fast, though. I think it might be... I don't know if I want to build some pipes or not. I'm trying to decide if I want to build some pipes. Pipes might be a decent idea. Either way, though, let's jump back inside. Go into the Cyclops. We'll get some air back. Let's take a look at what's required in order to make the pipes. I like walking this way. I know that it's the long way around, but it takes me through the ship, and it makes me happy. I would love to see even bigger ships in the game, though. Even up to, like, enormous carrier Protoss-type ships would make me happy. But then again, I am, like I said in the previous episodes when we got the Cyclops, I'm a giant sucker for carrier ships. Like, I love them. They're so awesome. Like, the fact that you can have, like, little ships nesting in big ships makes me really, really happy. I'm willing to bet we'll probably just need metal for this. Let me take a look here. What do we need for the pipes? So we got the sea glide. Pretty much everything here is oh we have we have there's a terraformer too. So you can build and destroy terrain. Alright, well we don't have any of that stuff. Oh, it only takes sand to make the pipes? Well hell. Make a pipe then. So I guess so you place above water or connect to an existing blue pipe by aiming at it. Okay, so it takes a bunch of sand. My guess is that they used that as the material required in order to did I leave my sea moth behind? I must have. What a foolish, foolish mistake to have made. Okay, at least we're close. So let me get some... I'm going to get a bunch of pipes here. Let's grab some sand off the bottom. I love how the sand vanishes when you pick it up. It's like those little things right there that really add to the gameplay. So you actually feel like you're picking up fistfuls of sand. I doubt that the pipes will stack. How big are the pipes, by the way? Oh, they're not that big. It'll be okay. I could probably... Yeah, let me dump those back onto the bottom. I don't know if they actually go back to the bottom of the sea once you drop them. But for right now, get back up in here, and then we'll make ourselves a few more pipes. I have no idea what type of construction project this is going to be, but I figure it's probably going to be a major one. Alright, no, I don't want a tank. No! I don't need another tank. It's a waste of my space. It's a waste of my space. Damn it. I need more pipes, though. Pipes would be good. Let's throw some of this stuff in our storage space. Sometimes this game doesn't feel like it's running at 60 frames, but it tells me that it is. Like, I have a frame rate watcher, like, right now that monitors the whole thing. And sometimes the game doesn't feel like it's quite 60 frames, but it's reporting 60 frames, which is the weird part. I don't know. I should throw these into the right box, shouldn't I? Put those in there. Yes, yes, yes. Constructor, you can stay in there. Throw the rutile in there. Got a bunch more sand, so I'll probably bring that on board, too. Just real fast. Lickety-splickety. There we go. We got Reginalds and everything else. We got plenty of salt for our next meal, so I'm not too worried about that just now. I love how the lighting of the ocean changes once nighttime comes, too. It's like one of those small changes that, for me, makes the game better. Makes everything look nice and all sort of glowy, I guess, but also it veers off into pitch blackness almost at an instant. It's a very unnerving yet also calming feeling at the exact same time, and I don't really know how else to explain the way that it makes me feel. But it's a good feeling. It makes me feel as though the game has had careful attention paid to, like, the environment and what you want it to look like. I'm hoping this isn't like every other crafting game on the planet that gets, like, abandoned after a little while. I don't think that it will because they've shown, like, a really, really good work ethic thus far. It didn't take them long to put the Cyclops out and they've been publicizing about it for, you know, since they put the game in. They've been like, oh, yeah, we're going to put the Cyclops in pretty soon. And so it sounds like they've got a really, really good game plan running for them right now. I think... This put us out in a trench. Yes, yeah, so we're out in a trench right now. We came out the other side. I'd love to see if there's going to be a way that you can build a base in these little caves underwater to maybe pump the oxygen out at some point and then put in, like, reinforced steel walls or whatever. be kind of cool. I think it would work. I think we got to go back this way, though, if we want to make it. Yeah, there it is right there. I was just terrified by my own ship. Like, that just big thing looming in the darkness, like, sitting there. And it's like a weird primordial, like, monkey upsetness too. Like, I know it can't hurt me, and I know it's just, like, it's my thing. I have ownership over it. But when you see that giant looming shape out in the blackness, it's, it's disturbing, to say the least. Let's grab some tanks here. I don't know why I put so many tanks outside of my inventory, but if we're doing deep-sea exploration... It would seem to me that having a lot of tanks would be a really, really good plan. So let me get those back. We've got 190 seconds worth of oxygen now. I mean, it's going to take us a while to refill, but on the plus side, it means that we should have a little bit more roaming time as well once we get off into the ocean. I think I'm just going to redock the sea glide for right now. Let's see if we can continue to find the other biome that we're looking for. Come on, jump back up in here. Oh, nope, don't crash into the side of the ship. That's nice. Thank you. 
And there it is. Up we go. Okay. After doing the animation a few times, I think I'm actually sort of leaning towards the fact that I think it's actually really, really nice that the animation plays quickly that puts you back in the ship. What is that? Oh, it's just something? I don't know what the hell that is. It's like some kind of weird shiny lichen platinum type thing growing on the walls. Kind of cool. We're not at the bottom, though. I'm... I want to find this biome very, very badly, but I think we got flipped around, and I think now we're back in, like, the red grass biome. He can't bother with us for right now, although at one point, I think the red grass biome runs into the mushroom biome. So what I may attempt to do right here is I may actually cut the episode until we get back in and over there. I can't seem to find it. That's my major issue for this episode. So for the time being, let me make a cut until I find the mushroom biome, and then we'll come back. Well, we didn't find the biome that we were looking for, but I did find this big rock while I was floating around. I mean, I guess we could go check this out and sort of just, like, see what it's got for us. If you're trying to go, I'm just, like, sailing around at this point, just trying to see what I can... Oh, there's trees! Oh, wow. Hold on, what's going on here? Oh, it's way bigger than I thought it was. There's, like, flowers and stuff. Hold on, we gotta check this out right now. Although, let's take care of our caloric problems first. So, I'm gonna detach from that right there. Let me cook up some food real fast. Forestall your excitement. I know, I always have trouble. I have that Christmas morning feeling right now. You know what I mean? Like, where you get up on Christmas morning... And, like, your mom's making hella food, but then there's, like, presents, and it's Christmas, and there's, like, Alvin and the Chipmunks all up on the radio, and you're like, it's Christmas! You're like, oh, that's my Christmas noise. You're, like, totally overloaded on Christmas. You're like, Aah! And so you can't, like, palate anything. It's just too much for you right now. Basically, that's how I feel right now. So I'm going to stuff some food inside of our character, and then we're going to go explore for a second. How's that sound? We'll get a peeper up there. I think between a peeper and a Gary fish, we should be good for a little while. Yeah, that'll work. There we go. Our vital signs are perfectly fine. We'll be we'll be fine. This lady worries about us. She worries about us too much. See, we handle our game. We handle our biz because that's how we ride. That is how we ride. So I'm going to throw these back in here. We are, however, out of food right now. So she may be correct in her assertion that we do not have all of the things that we require in order to survive in a suitable fashion. Anyways, got magnesium right there. Okay. Is, did I make a compass yet? Let's make a compass before we go to shore. How does that sound? We need, where's the compass at? Welder, transfuser, no, none of those things. There's a thermometer. I don't know what we need a thermometer for just yet, but my guess is that it's a placeholder. So right there, what does a current generator do for us as well? A battery? I may throw a beacon over here too. It might be a good idea. Let's make a battery. So we need carbon and zinc, I think, for the battery. So we've got, I know there's got to be zinc in here somewhere. Calcium. If I'm out of zinc right now, I'm actually going to be really, really surprised because I feel like I bring back a lot of zinc. But then again, maybe it's just like one of my own weird perceptional biases. So we need a battery. Correct. Yay, nay. Or did I get the wrong materials? Hold on. There it is. I'm just on the wrong menu. I'm just on the wrong menu. At least when you're on the wrong menu, sometimes like a Sunday will show up. Like, yeah, I ordered the burger, but you brought a Sunday. Be like, well, sir, that's because you were on the wrong menu and you said a Sunday. I'm like, oh, well, then no harm, no foul. I'm just going to have a Sunday for dinner because I can do that and I'm an adult. I like to watch the looks on little kids' faces when I say loudly in the middle of the restaurant, I shall have ice cream for dinner. And I just watch all of the parents in the room hate me and I'll be like, aha, this is what it feels like to be a 30 year old man child. Enjoying life. Let's see here. You should try it sometime. You should try it. Or like when there's that little kid in line just like losing his shit because he wants a candy bar, you should just like pick one up right in front of him and buy it. Just be like, hey, I'm an adult. <laughs> it's a dick move. It's a dick move, but just do it one time. Just watch. Watch the feeling you get. You can't even describe it. You'd be like, yeah, buddy. This is the feeling of power. I now understand why dictators do what they do. Let's see here. We've got beacon. We need metal for this to work. Let's see. Luckily, we happen to have a few of those, so that's good. Our stocks are looking pretty good. We've got a grav sphere, a small object attractor. I think they were playing around with that in one of the demos that they showed, the developers did. They showed off the, the grav sphere, and they said they weren't quite sure how they were going to use it just yet, but it's kind of like the gravity gun from, from Half-Life. Very, very similar, where it's going to allow you to manipulate matter and like move things around and make fun stuff happen. Let's go over here. All right, we'll go to shore. I will more than likely just dump this. Wow, I didn't even know I didn't know that land was in the game as of right now. I had no idea. So I guess I'll throw the beacon right there. It sets off a little ping. It's kind of adorable. 
That's pretty cool. It's got like an Eva thing. Well, no. It's like Eva with a crooked head. Like if Eva had some kind of like genetic malfunction. Oh, never mind. Let's get out of here. Can I climb up these rocks? I cannot. So for right now, what is this? It's a pretty little plant. Had I a girlfriend in this world, I would bring it to her. Just, you know, be like, from my travels from faraway lands, my lady. Tips fedora. <laughs> I've never worn a fedora in my life, and I don't plan on starting. I don't plan on starting. I think that's a fashion trend that, unfortunately, I'm, it's a little, I'm a little too late to the party for it. I'm a little bit too late to the party. I mean, we can go diving. Can you take fall damage yet? Is that a thing? Let's find out. I don't think that it is because the falling is sort of floaty right now. The falling doesn't feel like it has any weight to it, so I'm assuming it's something that they haven't implemented just yet. But I like the fact that they've brought in, like, see right there, you see how it looked kind of choppy? It's still reading 60 frames on all of my programs right now, and yet I know for a fact, looking at the screen, that it's not. No idea. The island appears to be sort of limited in scope, and that's fine. I don't want it to snipe me. I'd rather stay alive for right now, but I figure this is probably a decent place to break off the series, to be honest. Like, we've seen all the new content, we've checked back in, we've found the Cyclops, we've made a lot of the stuff. I and mean, we didn't put it on the pipes, but basically all it is is like a really, really long straw. From what I can tell, there's mushrooms too. I think they're just keeping this as like a placeholder for all the stuff that's going to be here in the future. I'm wondering if the stuff that's on land is going to be combined with the stuff in water to do some kind of like alchemy or potion creation. It's really, really awesome. I love the way this all looks. Just the color of it all. The way that it all feels alive. And then you've got like these little rocky sections. I don't know. I enjoy hiking. So I think that's what it is for me too. It looks kind of like a monkey's head right there. See like there's his nose and then he's got like really big lips and there's his mono brow. Like a gorilla's face with really big lips. And mm, gorilla angry. You on Gorilla Island. Gorilla no want you on island, gorilla sad. So does this just keep going, or like what happens over here? What's this little spot? Yeah, there's no fall damage. Maybe there's less gravity on this planet, though. That's the other thing that we could think about. Hey, what's up, little patch of sand? How you feeling right now? I assume that later on, you can get the terraformer already from what I understand. I don't know, it said that it had unobtainium in its recipe, but I, it might be on the test server only, or on the test build. I'm not sure. The game has both test builds and live builds available, so it can be... Hard to tell. What's down in here? Oh, wow. How far down does this go? Does it go to the bottom of the ocean? We're about to find out. Definitely looks like it goes down pretty deep. Watch. It's going to be a big... What they would do to mess with people right here if they really wanted to freak you out. Big giant mouth. The side of the screen comes up right when you get to the bottom and goes... Yum, and just eats you. Just eats you straight away. Like a sarlacc. <laughs> oh, man. That'd be the greatest. That would be the greatest. Just mess with players. I would wet myself. I don't deal with challenges very well underwater. Like, if I'm underwater, I'm already in a very, very weakened state. So, unfortunately, if things go even further awry, I don't know how to adapt to them at all. It looks like this is just like they're playing around. I think they're probably just playing around with world building over here and just kind of like seeing what they want to do with the islands. I love it, though. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm looking for it. looks like we might be slightly bugged right now. I don't know. There we go. Yeah, the sea glide caused us to kind of go through the ground or something right there. Either way, though, I've had a lot of fun playing Subnautica again. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the next episode. I look forward to checking in on the game again in the future. You can actually see our beacon from right here. That's pretty cool. I really, really look forward to, like, seeing you all again in this game. I We're out of content for right now, so I don't think I'm having trouble. I feel like I'm treading water, like always. Like, I, I, can, I have a definite feeling when I'm treading water in a series, and I'm getting that feeling for sure right now. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the series. I'm looking forward to seeing you all when we decide to visit again. I may Our next visit may be the 1.0 edition. I don't know. I may shelve it for a little bit because I don't want to... The problem that I run into is if I check in on it all the time like I do with like Starbound and stuff like that, I tend to burn the game out and stop caring. And so I like to leave it nice and... What is this? Like a poop hole? Cool. We got ourselves like a built-in latrine. Anyways, i spoken like a true geologist. I hate digging latrines. Latrines can go die in a fire. I'd rather just go like... Honestly, I just go poop out in the desert, and then I just, like, shovel some dirt over the top of it, and like, eh, it'll work out. Either way, though, I think we'll probably check in on this one at release again sometime, simply based on the fact that, like, I want to keep the game fresh, and I want to turn this into a big, like, fun series once we get there. So, anyways, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Subnautica. Take care out everybody, and as always, hi-do.